every year we do some kind of major climate update or prediction. In 2012, it was for record cold to come in the winter of 2013. In 2014, it was a prediction of a record El Nino that was to finally end the so-called global warming pause. Here we go once more, and we'll begin as usual by reminding everyone of three critical facts. Climate change is real, and it appears to be getting more intense. As the dominant species of this planet, we have proven that humans have an effect on this ecosystem and the climate within it. Pollution is a major problem for many reasons, including the contamination of our air, water, and soil with poison. In terms of our effect on the climate, the question has always been to what degree, and how to forecast the future amidst what is now two decades of failed predictions of global temperatures. It took the record ENSO event, an El Nino, in 2015 and 2016, to finally break the global warming pause and get record high temperatures again, but still, not to the levels that were predicted, even with the record El Nino. Speaking of the global warming pause, a few professors still don't believe it existed, but the world's top organizations and most top researchers recognize a temperature anomaly that deviated from expected since about the turn of the century or a bit before. The current explanation for it is that the heat has somehow been hiding in the Arctic. But we need to hold on to that thought for a bit of history to catch up. If some had their way, they'd have you believe the Earth was created in 1880, and indeed, there is not much previous temperature data that ever enters the climate debate. However, at the current stage, we are really about in the realm of what the medieval warming period was and about the Roman warming period before that. Without industrialization, we may well have already seen the beginning of a dive back into glaciation on this planet, a beautifully reliable cycle of which we've managed to enjoy the greatest period of warmth and we've flourished as a species, not unlike previous warm periods and explosions of life on Earth. However, something has happened during the global warming pause. Numerous stories of data manipulation, climate gate 1 and 2, censored research, and utterly abhorrent behavior from academic giants has become all too common, and not aimed at those denying any human effect on climate, but aimed at those merely seeking to discover the reason for the pause, the failed predictions, the missing pieces of the puzzle. There is a terrific article that I can't believe still exists online, although maybe not for too long. Intellicast was the powerhouse that has been behind the private, private sector workings of the weather company, the big money, the long-range forecasting, the non-politicized, we-just-need-the-best-information-in-the-right-answers sort of place. At the least, that used to be the case before IBM took the reins. I know it is a different place now, but back in 2009, in an attempt to have their experts say in climate change. They explain how the climate really fluctuates over genuinely meaningful timescales, and with the link below, you can read about how their experts believe that this climate was already well on its way to cooling back into a glacial cycle over 2,000 and even 5,000 year timescales. But then, they jerk the wheel and head into the forest. About halfway through the article, they go into a tirade. Remember, this is Intellicast top scientist stuff here. Likely driven by their frustration over lack of data, they describe how rural station after rural station was disappearing from the data. Not that the stations were disappearing literally, they were just being ignored by NOAA. Around the time they demonstrate in the article that the regions losing data versus the regions gaining data stations were the cold versus the warm anomalous regions, they do all but accuse NOAA of fraudulently labeling the entire ocean as warm when the majority of ocean stations at the time recorded below average temperatures. We've heard plenty of that type of behavior out of blog sites in recent years, but 2009 is as early as I've found such accusations of impropriety, and it's from Intellicast no less. Using the long-term data, they could come to only one inevitable conclusion. The glacial interglacial cycle every 100,000 years is supremely powerful, like needing eight times the human effect we've already seen to overcome the natural finish line of this cycle. It is only a matter of time. Those are strong words and strong minds. Now, let's get back to that global warming pause, the one that is allegedly driven by a game of hide-and-seek at the North Pole. It turns out that a recent article on Yale's blog site puts a bit of a wrench in this idea. The E360 blog breaks much of Yale's best science news, and this time it actually had me scratching my head a bit. Here's the short version. This gyre switches rotation every five to seven years. 
In this phase, the gyre accumulates and holds cold, fresh water. When it reverses, it releases that cold, fresh water in an event that helps drive the slightly cooler periods, not unlike the 1970s when an extreme release of cold, fresh water drove significantly colder temperatures across the planet. Now, according to their research, the gyre is stalled in this position. It has accumulated a record amount of cold, fresh water and now represents a ticking climate cold bomb their words. It is set to be released in the coming years, and nobody knows exactly to what extent it will have its effect. But let's add that on top of an amazing article that just came out from the Daily Mail. Sure, not our usual news outlet, but they got direct answers from some of the top scientists at the Met office, and that can never be ignored. Turns out 2017 was already a drop, lower in temperatures globally than 2016 and 2015, and they are officially predicting 2018 is going even lower. And their predictions have nothing to do with that Beaufort gyre. It's the normal weather with the little possible help from volcanic eruptions. Now this mainstream look at volcanoes in the near-term future having a climate effect mirroring that of this greater community online is encouraging, except for the inconvenient matter of the Beaufort gyre volcanic eruptions and solar grand minimum combining for a trifecta of climate change left turns. Let's not forget the Cliff's notes on the coming solar effects on climate from Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. All of the negative phase forcing, the high-level pattern shifts, make for bleakly chilled outlooks of the future. The Beaufort Gyre will release a record amount of cold, fresh water soon. We are about a decade overdue for a big volcanic eruption, Pinatubo size or larger. It is hard to find any indication on the sun that anything but a grand minimum is upon us, and we are already riding the end of an interglacial cycle. Now, despite acknowledgement of human-caused climate change and our extreme abhorrence of pollution, our concerns in this realm, as outlined in this video, get us this label. I would like you to ask yourself how the global warming pause happened with the cold fresh water trapped at the North Pole as the Beaufort Gyre has been stuck, and if that has been the case, how much heat could have really been hiding there? What happens if the gyre releases, the volcanoes go off, the sun goes to sleep, and we shift back towards the natural forcing of the glacial cycle? Thus far, we've seen the record El Nino push us one degree above average, and that's with the gyre holding the cold partially at bay. That means we would need eight times the current global warming, aided by the record El Nino, just to break even with the natural variabilities endgame as it takes us back down, eventually.